Hey everyone, it's Rexalini here, and today's video is going to be about how to choose your first costume. People ask me all the time how to start cosplaying, or they ask what the rules are, what they're allowed to do, or they want advice on who they should cosplay based on how they look. And I want to be able to answer all those questions, and hopefully I can do it quickly and not get too long-winded, because I can tend to do that, but I'm not making any promises, but I will try. So, first of all, there are no rules when it comes to cosplay. There are certain people out there who will try to act like that there are rules, but there really aren't. There's just certain people who view themselves to be higher than everybody else for whatever reason. If they think they're more attractive or they're more wealthy or they're, they have a healthier body type, it doesn't really matter. Certain people have instilled that sense of competition in the community where there's a lot of us myself included, obviously, who are trying to get rid of that notion because it's not true. Like, there aren't rules. You can be whoever you want to be whenever you want to do it, and you don't have to feel constricted by gender or race or height or weight or anything, really. You have the freedom to be who you want because that's the whole point. That's how cosplay started. It was meant to be a creative outlet for people to enjoy their favorite things. So why would we put rules on that? That's just silly, right? So if you ever see someone who's trying to tell you you can't do something because you're too fat or you're too short or whatever anyone might say, just honestly ignore it. Because even I've been the victim of that, where I found an unflattering photo on a board somewhere and, you know, people are making fun of me for it and... I know it's hard, but you just kind of have to brush it away and know that you're better than that. You don't need to bring yourself to that level. Just don't even go looking for that information. Just have fun. Um, bring your friends into it. Do whatever it takes that you have the most fun. If that means you take a character and you make a creative spin on it, awesome. If you follow that character's design to the letter, that's also awesome. Or if you do something in between, that's totally fine. Just have fun with it. So when it comes to trying to decide who you want to be first, there's a few tips I can give, but obviously it really depends on each person. So what I like to do is, if you're going to do your first costume, or in my case, if I'm trying to do something simple to kind of keep my workload down, I just start with a character that's as close to human as possible, if that makes sense. So anime characters are especially good for this because most of them are human, you know? They might have wings or something, but they usually don't have big pieces of armor. They're not Argonians from the Elder Scrolls that doesn't require prosthetics. It's mostly very simple. And if you happen to find a character in which you share closet items, awesome! That makes it even better. So if there's a character, like many schoolgirl uniforms, if they have a button-up shirt and you already have a button-up shirt, sweet, you're already partway there. So that's usually my advice when people ask is pick something really simple that you already kind of are partway there if you can because that way you get to experience being another person without having to put the stress and the money and that time into it at first because if you start with something like that and then it turns out maybe cosplay isn't really your thing. Maybe you being in the costume is not what you enjoy. Maybe you want to make things for others or maybe you want to make props or you want to make little fun artsy things like pins or bags and stuff like that. It's better to know before you spend hundreds of dollars. Um, that's what I think anyway. So there's a lot of great anime that just came out this winter that I've been watching and I'm probably going to do one of those characters because it's so simple and you don't have to worry about having a complicated wig that's got lots of parts to it or having, like I said, to make armor or have really crazy expensive pieces. It's just nice and simple. And honestly, nothing beats being comfortable at an anime convention. Just nothing. Because I've gone and walked around in uncomfortable, bulky, really cool looking costumes. But once it was time to switch into something simple, like some of the Vocaloid ones I've done, oh my gosh, awesome. Like, you can go around for hours in that, and it's totally fine. So, that's definitely one of the biggest things I try to tell people is pick something really simple but still really fun because you don't want to start 
by doing a really complicated project that you have trouble with that makes you not want to cosplay anymore because that's not fun and it's better to start at a lower level so that you can work your way up organically you can find what you like to do do you prefer altering patterns or do you really like sewing really complicated designs or maybe you really like painting or applique or whatever you find the thing that you're the best at or that you enjoy the most and then you find characters that have that and then you just start going from there if that makes sense there are certain people who will ask me you know who do i cosplay who aren't necessarily as nerdy as i am i don't really know how to put that in a not dumb sounding way but let me explain so obviously i play a lot of video games all the time i watch anime i read a lot of books all that kind of stuff that would be considered like a nerdy thing to do where some of my coworkers, especially my coworkers, because of where i work they're more into doing makeup and you know watching reality tv and going out and partying or whatever not to be stereotyping anybody but that's just what a lot of my coworkers do so when it comes time to picking a costume they don't have the library that i have to pull from of you know characters i have tons of games i've played and there's variations on every character and different books that have really good descriptions that i can make something off of or anime you know all that is my oyster to pull from where they haven't experienced as much of that and they just don't know who to be so for those people i always tell them you can still do whatever you want um obviously i know that sounds super not helpful but I'll give examples, so it'll kind of depend on the person. So there's like a coworker of mine, he plays Pokemon, but he doesn't really watch a lot of anime, or at least not anymore. So when he was asking, oh, you know, I want to cosplay, who can I be? I told him about the whole Jinka thing, where you take an animal character and you make them into a human, and then you cosplay that. And that's, I'm sure all of you, or most of you have heard of that concept. Like it's such a popular thing, it's everywhere. Tons of Jinka artworks have gone around all over the place certain artists are really famous specifically for doing that and that's such an easy thing to do you can design your own if you want to so if you know you know purple is my favorite color i have a lot of purple in my closet hmm i have a couple purple pokemon that i like maybe i'll just be haunter or ghastly or name another purple pokemon the library of pokemon in my head is a little less <laughs> there's too many to follow now too many pokemon uh anyway you kind of get what i'm saying and there's other series like that. Animal Crossing is a really good one. You can take Harry Potter too, because you can just be a student from any of the houses. You don't have to be Harry or Hermione or Ron or anything like that. You can just be like, oh, I'm a Slytherin. Cool, that's awesome. And it'll be really easy to tell. You'll have the scarf or the tie, whatever. So people will know who you are. I mean, you can even take it a step further, which some people do. I'm not a funny person. I don't have good comedy. So I couldn't pull this stuff off. But there are people out there who will be, they will cosplay memes, basically. It's a little difficult to explain if you haven't seen it, but there are people who do that and they do it very well. So you're not even limited to fictional characters or real characters, historical characters. It could just be a concept. You can cosplay a concept. Like how cool is that? So if there's people out there cosplaying concepts, you can't sit there and say, I can't do this because I'm not allowed to. That's just crazy talk. If someone is cosplaying the freaking Arthur meme where he's got his fist down and like that meme, you can be male, dark-skinned Merida from Brave if you want. Like, if anyone wants to say anything about it, they're crazy. There's going to be more people who are so appreciative of you for making something so unique that they're not going to care what you look like or what your gender is. Or any of that stuff that you think is important. It's not important. When it comes to cosplay, you can do whatever you want. So yeah, if you take anything out of this, probably at this point, long video, there's no rules. There have never been rules, there will never be rules. So don't try to make rules for yourself on what you're allowed to do. If it makes you comfortable, if it makes you happy, if it keeps you safe and healthy, then go. Go do that. Go do that. You don't need to ask anybody's permission. There's no cosplay god to ask, can I do this? No. The only person you have to answer to is yourself. 
If anybody wants to say anything to you, positive or negative, that's on them. It's more about what you think and how you feel. Anyways, thanks for watching, and the next video in this series will be how to plan your first costume. And I know I've done this video before, but that was almost four years ago, so I figured certain things have changed. Might as well make it again. So keep your eyes peeled for that, and see you next time. Bye!